Welcome back to Anderton's TV. I'm in the studio today with Danish Pete. Hola. And a pile of <laughs> amplifiers that are hoping to show you some of the best of British. Um, they're all made in England, obviously. They're, but they're, they're all trying to give us tones of early Marshall amplifiers. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get into this shootout, yeah, yeah. please like and subscribe to the channel. You remember. Um, we Good. would love to get to a million subscribers, at which point we yeah. will give away a real clon. And on our journey to a million, every 10,000 new subscribers will give away something and anyway. I think we should do something as well. Jump out of an airplane or, you know, with no... Uh, no parachute. No parachute, <laughs> of course. I mean, do um, something at least to celebrate. So, I'm not going to get too much into the history of the JTM 45. Don't but, do that. Uh, this is very much an amplifier that's reminiscent of uh, 1960s blues, you know, British blues kind of bands. Um, it was one of the cleanest sounding Marshalls they've ever made. It was the sort of, it was Jim's. Wasn't it the answer uh, to like the basement or something? Wasn't it that kind of yeah. thing? I mean, that, that's basically the idea, you isn't it? You couldn't get it. You, you go, you, yes, that, that sort of on. emerging rock scene in London in the 1960s just couldn't get fender amplifiers as, yeah. as readily as obviously you have been for the last 30 or 40 years and so Jim basically and his team started to make their amps and I, and I believe that the you know, legend goes that the original schematic of an early Marshall was basically identical to a baseman just the only components that were changed were just because they didn't have the components six six that um, were in the fender. Anyway, Sounds like a Harry Potter spell schematic. So our rig is these five amplifiers, which are all kind of designed or, you know, leaning on this sort of early Marshall vibe. Mm -hmm. So we've got two Marshalls, uh, a Victory, a Friedman and a Tone King. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know because it'll be in the comments section already. Obviously, as you guys know, I have a small share in Victory, which I've had since 2012 or something like that when it first started. So again, I will attempt to uh, not be biased at all. And, and also know, just... I've had something to do with that as well. But... Indeed. Um, Don't so judge it, okay? So the, the, the amps are all <laughs> plugged into the Ampete switcher, uh -huh. five amps. Uh -huh. uh, we are going to hear it through a Marshall 4x12, which uh -huh. is mic'd up with a, just a single... That's you know, a Royal 57. Got the Royal classic, 57 on classic, there. Classic, um, classic. That is a, is that a 1960 classic? It's a 1960 it? so classic. Straight 1960 classic. We also have everything going through the Oxbox. So if I turn the speaker to zero and turn the line out up, you're going to hear an attenuated kind of um, DI'd sound uh -huh. using the uh, aux with again, I think, yeah, we've basically got the same two microphones. Yes. It won't sound identical, but nope. what it will enable us to do is start cranking some of these amps. So Pete, Crank it. can we hear, at the moment, everything is at 12 o'clock. Yeah. No one is suggesting that that's how you need to set your amp up. Definitely fact, not this one. <laughs> with these two, you'd probably never do that. But we're just going to do a, what do they all sound like at 12 o'clock? Um, the Victory and the um, Little Sister are set with their sort of gain stages at the lowest stage. And the um, uh, Tone King Royalist is set in its 1964 mode, mm -hmm. which again is its sort of least gainiest. Oh, so much to take in there. I'm sorry, already. It's but just there we are. Too Pete, much. Let's yeah. have, so we're. I don't know if you can see these over my shoulder here, but it basically goes Looking one, back. two, three, four, five, uh, and we're currently at two, which is the OG. Yeah, and uh, I'm playing a Hanson T uh, S yeah. start S type S yeah. type, isn't it? The only so, amp, I'm so sorry, the only amp that has reverb yeah. built in is this one, yeah. which we've switched off. So actually, if you do hear any reverb... Um, I'll try not to use any reverb because it's unfair. Okay, but, but well, that's the other nice thing with the aux. If we use the aux into the DI, there's reverb from that, yeah. and it'll be the same reverb great on every yeah. And also, I think some of them takes reverb pedals better in the front than others because it's going in the front, right? Indeed. On all Indeed. of it. So, Indeed. Uh, anyway, here we go. Reverb. 
just, just a classic, I just classic up, sound. My whole isn't it? childhood grew up with you buy Marshall for high gain, Fender for clean, and I think during you know during the eighties and the nineties yeah. that was just how everybody thought. And then over the last, I think sort of twenty years maybe the the cleaner Marshall vibe has begun to reintroduce and especially over the last two or three years. You say that because I used to use a JCM 800 and a 4x12 would play pop gigs. For clean Blues though. music, yeah. Mm. So I was running it as clean as, because that's loud. Anyway. Now with everything at 12 good. on here, is there any sense if you dig in, maybe go to that back humbucker that it'll go maybe. a bit? No, it's just like, Still, yeah. it's immediate, isn't it? Yeah, a lot right. of snap. Sounds okay. good though. So the first amp we're going to compare it to, again with everything on 12, is the new JTM Studio from Marshall. I say new, this came out last year. Uh, so that's this one. That was our favourite uh, amp of last year. Great amp, yeah, absolutely. So let's give that a try. More gain, bit more, more gain. clarity. It clarity. Is, it is uh, um, lower power output, so you yep. probably aren't going to have that snap. You're going to get a little bit more compression and Literally. drive. Sounds good as well, isn't it? It does. Can it's I just a compare? Good sounding amp, I'm going to go back to the OG. Yeah. We'll leave the reverb on yeah. and just go between the two. Okay. get that little click that's just yeah. the whatever that is inside that thing. snap in it. Brighter, brighter, not as bassy. Yeah. You'll notice the uh, two Marshalls here have this uh, four inputs. So one channel is a, a bright channel, mm -hmm. one is a normal channel. And again, what guitar players used to do in the day was they'd use a little patch cable there, that little red cable there to link the two channels. And then that way you could run both channels simultaneously. Yeah, you go into normal one normal and... way. Yeah. These amps don't have that, but these are all voiced to kind of almost emulate that jumped uh, two channels. In, in isolation, I always find the bright ones too bright and yeah. the normal ones too dark. Absolutely. So it's a, they, they complement each other perfectly to run together. Absolutely. Anyway, anyway uh, what are we doing next good. then? Well, should we go Tom King? Okay, Royalist, uh, Mark, two or three are we on now? Mark three, yeah, the latest beautiful. one. Yeah. This will be the most expensive one Absolutely. in our yeah. uh, setup and I'll talk prices a bit later on. It's Fat. a wonderful, wonderful amp. I left the reverb on because, just because. Oh, it's such a good amp, man. That sounds it's great. It's such an amazing amp. So the Royalist actually has its own built uh, in attenuation, which we're not using. Yeah, but one per channel each, as well. Yes, two. each channel has a fat switch, which again, we're not using uh, at this stage. Uh, and again, three modes. So it can go from 64 to 67 to 70. And again, that sort of recreates the, uh, the, the sound of the amplifier as, as the Marshall went through mm -hmm. the ages. I love that amp. So, so, good. That, so again, really this, this first round of playing is just an everything on 12 
yeah. not really sort of, you know, maybe you, uh, uh, okay, let's do number four. These two sounds most, most alike right now. Do you think? Yeah. Oh, okay, let me just do yeah, that again. Just, and I just, just, right, so one. And your voice goes up and get all excited. Two. Maybe not. Three. Much, much, much more bright in mm. the top end. Well, yeah. the, I mean, I you see can, what you're you saying. Can, that's yeah. the brighter. That, that it goes like this, Marshall. this, that, right? Yeah. But these, these are close. I didn't realize that these two are going to be this close. I, I'm almost, still yeah. quite surprised that on these settings, none that's of these amplifiers are, are digging in yet. Yeah, let's, until you... let's try. Let's see. Man, that's maybe a little bit. But not really. I'm on the on the bridge here as well. That does it a little bit. A little bit. bit. Sounds so good though. It does sound great. Number four. This guitar is great as well, man. Okay. Put the reverb on. That's more like this, isn't it? I mean, we can't, you know, like, they're very yeah. similar, aren't they? They sound very uh, similar. I was only thinking, again, we are still using the yeah, same yeah, reverb yeah. pedal in the front, even though we could put reverb. Let's go between these two now, so we... So, Royalist so, versus yeah. Deputy. De was this Royalist? Royalist. Okay. More top end again. In here. Low, more low yeah, end. More low end, yeah. So, sort of, but a mid range low end, right? Sort of, it, it's sort of a 200, 300. I, saw, I sort of bump. feel at this, it almost reminds me of that Josh uh, Scott kind of comment about the clon, which is like until you start to get them clipping. Yeah, that's when. Like, yeah. they're all sounding remarkably similar. Yeah. Uh, okay, number five, the little sister. Did you swap? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All but, right. Look, so go, I, just go back. I sort of apologise for the popping noise that this ampete thing is making in between, yeah, but it, I guess it is what it is. So it's real. I'm just going to run through one to five now. Okay. Number two. Here we. I'm not going to have an opinion in this video because uh, it doesn't matter what it is, I'll be wrong. Uh, other than the fact that I think at the moment this one probably sounds the best one. Yeah, I, yeah. But you would think that because that's the most expensive one. Well, right? you go. Let, let's talk about price now. Now, again, in the US and the UK, Marshall prices are vastly different. So mm. you're going to have to probably go check your local uh, retailer over. But in the UK, the most affordable one is the Studio JTM. Yeah. We, we get change out of a thousand pounds over here for this. In fact, we get quite so a lot like of change. It's like 8.99, isn't it? Something, or something yeah. like that. It's, it's the uh, deputy and the 
2245, the JTM 45 are similar. I think the victory is maybe a hundred pound cheaper than this, but these are both around, this is like 1350 and 1450. Little sister creeps up a little bit more than that 18. again. And then the big one, I think, is a big old leap. This is... 2,500, 2,600, yeah. Yeah, 2,700. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. It might be different in America because, of course, you know, these two are made in the States and these three are made in the UK. So there might be some differences, uh, but you'll have to go check. Can I just put, uh, say something here? I think the two amps that sound most similar right mm -hmm. now is that one and that one. Well, I'm not allowed an opinion, so it's fine. I'm, I, you have to <laughs> well, decide. Well, I'm not allowed to have an opinion so either, really, but I just, I like okay, them all. Okay, so we've got lots of things now that we can do. We can start to gun these. We can try them through the ox. We could try, I think we should try with the Les Paul first. Yeah, okay, we should do a 12 o'clock Les Paul and a pedal in the front. So everything okay. 12 o'clock. That's a great looking guitar, that Hanson, isn't it? It is. It's links below for that one. Mm, bop. Mm. So, okay, so. Oh, God, what's the... So again, this is a big, I think we go the big bridge pickup power chord. Yeah. Uh, and again, going through uh, off no, my No, I need to take the reverb off now because otherwise Fine. it'll. So do you want just, I'll put a Dane on. Do oh, it sorry. once without and once with. Okay. So all right. the way around just the guitar into the amp. I, I, thought, I thought I was going to do it whilst yeah. you were just playing. At least, at least timing and counting is the best in the world. Do, it's just... do you, don't, don't stop. I think it's easier yes, to... Okay. One, three, one, two, go. It's more top in, in, in that. It's, this is probably... Yeah, it's more choppy, isn't it? This is the one that seems to break up a little the bit. first. Yeah. Not dissimilar. I think the Friedman and this one are breaking up similarly, but yeah. with everything at 12, the Friedman just doesn't sound as loud as this one. But what but, have we got? We've got 20 watts, 20 right. watts, 30 tw watts. 25. 25, 30. I think that's... Is, it is that 40, 30? isn't it? I don't think it's that much, is it? We should look that up. Yeah. It's 30 as well, is it? I so they're all yeah. similar wattage, Yeah, and then 20. Yeah. So different yeah. valves though in them, aren't there? Yeah. So again, perhaps we'll, as we're going through the next round, we'll put, I tell you what, next round with the pedal for each amp, we'll put the official power wattage uh, and the, whatever the power valves that are in them. So, okay. Yeah. Do you what want you a tube gonna, Well, I think everyone That's will be more familiar of... with the tube, but I like, I just like the boost. I think just go with the boost side of the Dane. So this is Ooh. just a clean boost into the amplifier now. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Let's, let's go round. I mean, that sounds flipping fantastic. Yeah, it's, I mean, again, I think this is the, this must have whatever the ingredients that go in to make big sounding amplifiers, whether it's fat transformers or lots of valves or whatever, but yeah. this does sound amazing. Yeah. Um, and the Victor is top Quite interesting how, to how well, dark well. the yeah. JTM 45 actually Old school. is. Right. Yeah. And how top, how much top end there is in the Victory. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah, I agree. I, compared to the other ones, I didn't realise that was. I think again, thing. it's a the, the everything at twelve o'clock is obviously it's a, it's a it's a fair test, but there's no rule book that says this is how you must have your amp. Oop. So what's the Sorry. next thing then, Mr. Pete? Are we going to start? Do you want to hear everything now through the ox? Maybe gunned a bit. I mean, what do you want to do? Because I can I can drop can attenuate, the attenuation yeah. down. Still hear it through the speaker. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Let's go. Still lead the EQ, but let's three quarters gun Oof. everything. You're uh, James gone. Uh, oh, here we go. Here uh, it let's is. Just see what okay. Okay, I might have probably got a bit. 
Oh so my lord! The, we've stepped the attenuation back on the ox by one. So the first round you heard everything on five, now we're on four. And then everything is... Oof, man, okay. <laughs> Power chord, this will do. Now, th now those two sound very similar. I, think, the I still end. think I still think these two sound similar. Really? I, I thought the the drive in this JTM studio sounds more like a, f a fuzzier. Sound, vintage whereas kind of these sound. Sound more a smoother drivey sound. Yeah, but well, these, look, these two are similar, aren't they? No, I didn't think, I they think were so. In that particular what? test. Go again, just quickly, right, just okay. one or two. It's just darker again, isn't it? But sorry. What you're hearing, but I'm not. I'm hearing these two is more right. similar than these two. I, That's got a bit, bit more of that. I'm that feeling body. like these two here want to be louder. I'm feeling like these two just yeah. Want they less. need a little bit of. I think the these two here want less on the preamp gain and more power amp, whereas these yeah. three are sounding pretty fat. Try, try, try that though. Really quickly though. So All give right. them a little bit less and then a little bit more on that. Uh, and then okay. So I'm going to turn the gain to just sort of six, but the. In yeah. fact, I'm going to have pretty much the gain and the master round about one, the one same. Okay. Uh, so, so this is number To be completely honest, I'm, I've never been a fan of these cap of these cabinets because it's got those green back raspiness going yeah. on. I prefer that more smooth uh, of the cream back, which I know that Friedman and you know, yeah, and, and they're using now as well, well in their it, cabinets. It, I mean, yes, yeah, so it's a more forgiving speaker. Yeah, it's, a, it's more. So ju just in case you, so the, the 1960A classic, which is the Marshall 4x12 we've got there, is green back loaded. Yeah, your, your normal, you know, it's you can get. Marshalls with vintage 30s yeah. and G1275 and all kinds of stuff. That was, but that is a green back loaded one, which actually is probably not totally wrong for this. No, nope. it's a sort of you know that's a, a pretty typical speaker to pair with a vintage sounding Marshall. Yeah. But it's more for your ear, isn't it? But, and it's funny they started using. Yeah, I would agree though. I mean, Pete and I are both prefer we, we whatever. Well, yeah, just, I mean, it, it's the same. It's yeah. the same cab for every amp. Exactly, so but it's just I'm just saying. I think, I think it would, it's that raspy mm. sort of where the, it's almost like the cardboard yeah. is making a bit of a um, rice raspberry sound. Just because we've got it set up, we're going to do this next segment now using the DI from the Ox. Uh, my that, yeah. cabinet is uh, a GB25 Ooh, wow. thick four by twelve. It's got a ribbon, it's got a one two one and a dynamic 57 on it. A little bit of bass roll off on both of those mics. Uh, and a little bit of reverb now is actually coming from the aux. Yeah, good. Uh, so you're hearing a DI'd sound on all these now. We've basically just taken it back a bit. With, yeah, just a tiny bit back. Found actually on the Marshall and the, on the two Marshalls actually, just having the high, the treble channel slightly louder than the normal channel just to add a bit more presence yeah, in. Presence. Anyway, here we go, number one.
that's that. Sorry, I got lost in your playing there because that's what, <laughs> that's where I think these amplifiers have had such a huge revival recently. Yeah, is the touch responsiveness of them. Yes, so they will go clean and then they will overdrive nicely. Just <laughs> when you pick it a bit harder, yeah. or if you switch the pickups. Yeah. It's got that. Okay. Anyway, so that was the first one. Number uh, two. Uh, uh. That does it even more. I don't like the way these two break up as much as I like the way these three break up. Yeah, I'm um, just. It's more. It's more. I feel, modern, I feel more unpatriotic controls. saying that. Yeah, it's more. Uh, it's, but it's more controlled and more. It's more. Yeah. It's, it's new, isn't it? Yeah. And I think this is supposed to be that. So you would assume that this would sound the same yeah. with the same breakup. But this is all subjective. You know, it's subjective, all subjective. I like. I was the getting, other speakers. I was or, getting vibes of Chili Peppers kind of vibes. I mean, I know that was yeah, sort of that, playing a similar. It's, that, it's this. Okay. Yeah. That's three seconds of review. It's, your... it's that. It's that. I don't know what I. I really like what you're playing on the treble strings. Yeah. And then the, the lower down the strings go, the more it flubs, is doesn't that... it? Let's do the flub test. Flub so, test. Number two. It's got mid, mid fluff. Yeah. Not the same fluff, fluff does no. it? So it's much more treble in that than I would expect compared to the others. Doesn't have fluff. Three, Again, three, four, and five don't really flub, whereas flub one and fluff. two flub and fluff flub a little and fluff. bit. In our opinion, yeah. Um, okay, I think it's more fun just going through the speaker and being yeah, really loud. So absolutely. Do, do we want to just go the <laughs> test? I mean, is that a thing? <laughs> that is, that, I mean, that is a test. I mean, I don't know. I don't think this is where these amps sound the best, but you probably want to hear it, right? So, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think these two are going to be the best like that. Really? Yeah. I, I don't even know how we do this one. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> That's dangerous holy with that one. Holy. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep the... Uh, we're going to stay in its 64 voicing and, and not pull the fat control out. Holy mother of moly. We're just going for these. There oh, could gosh. well be smoke coming out. And again, we're going to leave the these two in their lower gain settings as well. Um, all right, it's on. How loud is? Still, I go less Paul on this one. I would go well back humbucker. Back humbucker. Let's... That's good, isn't it? It does have that, that compressed sort of sound, isn't it? It's 
got the does same. It, does it clean up a little bit as well? And this is, my, I'm not even dialing it down, I'm just playing softer. Oh, okay. Okay. Having an attenuator is such a great tool, isn't it, for any guitar it is, player? It is. Uh, right, number tool three. It's it's very brittle, that isn't it? I mean, it I sounds like it. epic, but I mean, let, if we fatted it as well. Yeah, try to fatten it up. That's what I like about these amps that you can, when you just play softly, it's still, it doesn't, it's not gainy. Does that make sense? No pedals. You know what? I think with that amount of gain and stuff on it, it's a shame there are some of these that don't have effects loop on them, right? I think yeah, it, these two don't have effects loops, whereas these three do. I think it's, it's, I, I almost want to hear that ambient reverb Because this, on this is what's going to happen. Yeah, you you right can't in the front. really do that, can you? Anyway, number four. Ram it in the front. Wow, that's almost too much, isn't it? I think you'd be better off taking the gain down and then using the second gains, the two, oh, okay. the gain we, voicing gains. We can gains. try that. Right. Yeah. It's oh, and we can have reverb. Just gonna. <laughs> yeah. And then finally... Yeah, again, again, brittle. I think it's got those... There's too much top end and... I'll do... You know what? I'll, I don't do like the... any of these on the full... With everything on yeah, full. No. I like these two with everything full. But I don't like this, that or that. It's just... Let me do that not... thing where I do that slightly yeah. higher. What's that? The victory? Any more volume? There, there isn't any more. There isn't any more. Really? Can well, you not? Don't forget, we're on. It's almost like that floppy low end, that fluffy bobby or whatever you call it. It works on these when everything is full. Does that make, I think these get too top end um, somehow. I think it's too much. I wonder if that is just modern amplifiers. The EQ is so much more powerful. They're just not designed to be exactly. timed like that. I mean, like who, that. who does Whereas that anyway? Obviously, the old Marshall yeah. EQs probably just, yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Man. It's, uh, oh. Crikey O'Reilly, I'm glad we had the attenuator here, otherwise that would have been... Well, what do you, what do you want to do? do you want I don't to, know. Let's, do you want to sort of... Can we get find... a nice clean tone out of all of them? I think, let's let you do that with your... Dame. You set them up. In fact, I tell you what, 
Yeah, but that's we'll, this. We'll I'm take a it. we'll take a five minute break. Pete is going to get his favourite sound <laughs> on each one, and then that'll be our final thing. Here you are, Here ladies and go. gents. Zoom in close to where the knobs are because these are Pete's favourite settings on all five amplifiers. Clean. Uh, it's set clean, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to use uh, the flint reverb on all of them, and yeah. then Pete will just stomp in and out his Dane. Uh, so we'll just do like, I don't know, 30 seconds on each one and that's the end of the video. Yeah. So these are all for sale from Anderton's, links are below, Ox is for sale, uh, pedals are for sale, guitars are for sale, so, my soul is for sale, uh, as you all know. I've sold my soul uh, already, many times. <laughs> hey, which one is your favourite lead? No, don't answer that. No, I, do you know I'm what? Kidding. It's. <laughs> I think it's surprised me, and I suppose from that perspective this comes out as a winner, because it surprises me how close they all are tonally. Yeah. I sort I sort of feel like if Depends money, on money, if money was no object, absolutely. There's so much stuff on this with the built-in attenuated steering. Yep. This is great. If money is an object, then I sort of I did like the Marshall, and then kind of like I don't know. I mean, look, do you know what? I, if I say I like the Victory one, I just get shot. So I'm not saying it. But, you know. <laughs> um, but of course, I like them all. They are uh, great. What I really like again, and I need to explore because I'm using, I'm going down that very traditional high headroom clean amplifier with yeah. pedals at the moment yeah. and I wonder if I do want to just try something more like one of these for a bit just to see if I'm into it yeah but it's different with with pedals you have to run all your overdrive pedals much less gain mm. which is which is you know which is all right well look, so the, the last bit of the demo yeah. we're back to just using the 412 again in the room mic'd up so here we go number one I like the extra headroom that came in. Do you know what I don't think we've said in the whole video? Of course, the drawback with these two amplifiers is they're not master volume amplifiers. Yeah. So the only way you can drive them is to turn them up loud. Yeah. And then you have to have a device like this yeah. to control it. This has a built-in. Strictly, strictly speaking, this has no master volume either, but of course it has the attenuator built in. It's got no um, effects loop either. This guy has no effects loop. Has this got a effect? This no, has. this has. That uh, has. These that two has. have yeah. um, master volumes. So of course, you know, you could argue that actually for somebody needing to get uh, a more enough. of a pushed sound at lower volumes, mm -hmm. these two, or this one, would be the better option. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. Let's try number three. <laughs> Snap. Oh, well, that's very clean, isn't it? <laughs> Funny, that sounds great, but funny how I want to turn the gain up now because there's it's obviously got more. Too much headroom. It's too or, much headroom in it. But I'll just give a little bit more gain on yeah. that. Oh. All good sounding outs, man. Sounds great. Number four. Yep. Ooh, that 
that sounds good. <laughs> Can we just, before we go, can you just turn the reverb up like three o'clock, all the way across there, yeah. So just to show that the reverb, because this is the only one that's got reverb in it, so I just want to go. All the way up. That's the beauty of this, I guess. I mean, the reverb is just this, that's it's, next to Anyway. It's so not what I grew up thinking Marshalls were all about. No. And finally, <laughs> the little sister. Nice and fat. Oh, mother. They are all great, man. There we go. And they are all great. Yeah, and again, how much more fun is it playing with a 4x12 in the room rather than a little pair of studio speakers? Just saying. Just saying. <clears throat> right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you didn't get the message at the beginning, please like and subscribe. If you're uh, still here. <laughs> and we'll see you in another video soon. Au revoir. Love you. Bye.